find the product of these binomials. You might have heard this before as FOIL. You all heard FOIL before? FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. Um, I personally hate the word FOIL. I think it's a four-letter F word. Um, so I don't like using the term FOIL because really it's just a trick to help you with the math that you're doing when really if you understand that you're simply using the distributive property that's all you need to know. So FOIL says first outer inner last. You multiply the first terms together. So x times x would be x squared. Then you multiply the outer terms together. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Now what you just did, you distributed x to the second set of parentheses. Now we're going to do the O, or sorry, the I and the L, the inner and the last. <clears throat> 3 times X is 3X, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. What you just did is distribute the 3 to the second set of parentheses. So really all you're doing is using the distributive property twice. Distribute the X, then distribute the 3. So if you think of it as using the distributive property, you don't have to remember FOIL. You don't have to remember what FOIL stands for. Just use the distributive property. Once you get to here, we need to combine our like terms. Our like terms are negative 5x and 3x, which combine to give us negative 2x. And that is our expanded form. Expanded means after the multiplication. All right. Now, I want you to see the connection between the numbers 3 and negative 5 and our answer. So think about 3 and negative 5 and this negative 2x. How are 3, negative 5, and negative 2 related? 3 minus 5 is negative 2, or 3 plus a negative 5 is negative 2. And that's what we did when we combined like terms. We added those two numbers together. Now think about 3, negative 5, and negative 15. How are those related? Multiplication. So if we're going to undo multiplication by factoring, what we're basically trying to do is figure out which two numbers multiply to give us negative 15, at the same time, those two numbers have to add up to negative 2. This number is the result of multiplication. This number is the result of addition. And that's how we're going to go about undoing the distributive property. All right, but let's practice multiplying binomials. So try B on your own. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Combine your like terms, and we have 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Now, C, there's a couple different ways you could approach C. I would prefer if you multiply the binomials first and then multiply the two. So thinking about what we, we talked about in A, the middle number is the result of adding, the last number is the result of multiplying. You could even go so far as to just skip that middle step and say that this is going to be x squared. If we add negative 4 and negative 3, we get negative 7x. Multiply them, we get positive 12. So if you see that connection, it can also help you in multiplying more quickly. And then you've got the 2 in front, so multiply that in. 2x squared minus 14x plus 24. We are still working with quadratic functions, ax squared plus bx plus c. a is still the number in front of x squared, b is still the number with the plain x, and c is still the naked number with no x. First, we're going to look at factoring when a equals 1. So notice in all of these examples today, there's not a number in front of x squared. So the number in front of x squared is 1. Factoring is a little bit easier when a equals 1. It's very straightforward. 
This C value happens when you multiply the two numbers from the binomial together. So if our C value is positive, that means both numbers in the parentheses have to either be positive or they both have to be negative. Positive times positive is a positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. But here's our strategy. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 6. Those same two numbers have to add up to 5. Now, especially when these numbers are small, this might just appear in your brain. You might be able to look at this and just know what the pair is. Some of you might have to think a little bit more, maybe write down and try a few things. But 1 times 6 wouldn't work because 1 plus 6 is not 5. So 2 times 3 gives us 6. 2 plus 3 is also 5. So the numbers inside the parentheses are positive 2 and positive 3. The factored form is x plus 2 times x plus 3. You could also write x plus 3 times x plus 2. It doesn't matter which order your parentheses are in. In number two, same strategy. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 36. Those same two numbers have to add up to negative 12. Now, since we're adding to get a negative number, we know negative numbers are going to have to be involved, but we're multiplying to get a positive number. So that means they both have to be negative. So which two negative numbers would multiply to give us 36? and add up to negative 12, negative 6 and negative 6. So our factored form is x minus 6 times x minus 6. Could we maybe write that a little bit simpler? x minus 6 squared. If the two sets of parentheses are exactly the same, you can write it x minus 6 squared. I would like you to try example three on your own. Now, because the numbers are larger, it might take a little bit more to get that pair of numbers. So give this a try on your own. We are multiplying to get 84 and adding to get 19. All right, now, personally, multiplication is not my forte. So I look at these and I think I have no idea what numbers to use. If you don't know what numbers to use, systematically go through what could you multiply to get 84. And even though it might seem silly, start small. So 1 times 84. 1 times 84. 1 plus 84 is not going to give us 19. 2 times 42. 3 times, I don't even know, 28. 4 times 21, 5 is not going to work, 6 times 14, 7 times 12. Okay. Sometimes it takes listing out all of the ways to multiply to get 84 to find the pair. So systematically go through it. Don't just randomly try 3 times 11 because... Make sure that you actually look for pairs of numbers that multiply to give you 84. I found 7 and 12. 7 times 12 will multiply to give us 84. 7 times 12 will also add up to 19. So our factored form is x plus 7, x plus 12. Oops, forgot my second set of parentheses. And here's a little helpful how to factor when a equals 1. Now, type 2 is actually exactly the same. This time, our C value is going to be negative. In order to multiply and get a negative number, one of our numbers is going to have to be negative. So this time, the signs in our parentheses are going to be different. But we're going to tackle this exactly the same way. Look for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 18 and add up to negative 7. I typically ignore the negative on the 18. Think about what can you multiply to get 18, and don't think so much about the positives and negatives yet. We can do 3 times 6. We can do 2 times 9. I know that 2 and 9, 
I could probably get 7 from 2 and 9. Which number needs to be negative? The 9 needs to be negative. A hint, if you want your addition, if you want the sum to be a negative number, the bigger number needs to be negative. If you want the sum to be a positive number, the bigger number needs to be positive. So it does not matter which order you do your parentheses. The important thing is positive 2, negative 9. So make sure that the minus is with the 9 and make sure the plus is with the 2. Please give numbers 5 and 6 a try on your own. Now, some of you may need to write out 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times, I don't even know, 4 times 12. But 6 and 8 are the numbers we are going for. X minus 6, X plus 8. All right. Number 12, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 28 and add up to negative 12. Anyone know what those are? Two and negative 14. Okay, does seven look a little bit different? Yes. What is different about number 7? It's missing the middle number. Because it's missing the middle term, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 49. Those same two numbers have to add up to 0 because the middle term is not there. Which two numbers would add up to 0 and multiply to negative 49? 7 negative 7. So this is x plus 7, x minus 7. Underneath this, I would like you to write that this is called the difference of two squares. Do you all know your perfect squares? 1, 4, 9. That's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 4. If you recognize your perfect squares, this is called the difference of two squares because it is a perfect square, x times x, minus a perfect square, 7 times 7. And if you can recognize that it's x and 7, you can easily put it into x plus 7, x minus 7. So the next one, what is 64 the perfect square of? 8. So this one is x plus 8, x minus 8. If you can identify that difference of two squares pattern, you can get that one factored without doing any extra steps. And any time that you can just immediately factor it without doing any work, that's going to save you time. Next page, we have three more quick examples. The GCF is the greatest common factor. The GCF just means what do these two terms have in common that we could undistribute? What could we pull out of both of these terms? So x squared and x and 5x, what do they have in common? x. x times what is x squared? x x times what is 5x? Positive 5. That is the factored form. You're just undistributing the x. So pull that x out or divide that x out of both of those terms. So try number 2 or number 10. What do 2x squared and negative 12x have in common? 2x. Start with the number. 2 times what is 2? 1. We don't really need to write the 1 x times x is x squared. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and then you've got that x. And with GCF, you can always check your work by multiplying it back in. Try number 11 on your own. They have 12x plus 12y. 
Minus seven.